Okay, so <clears throat> last night was the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights reached all the way down. People in Utah were, said that they were seeing it. I saw it. <clears throat> Here's a couple of pictures of what I saw last night. So here, uh, I took a picture of this. This is actually, it started showing up in an area I didn't see it earlier. And it looked red to me with the naked eye, but this brought out a lot more colors. And I thought, even though that's ugly, I thought the, the cross was uh, very symbolic. This, <clears throat> I was trying to capture the pillars or the white lights that kept coming because it all seemed to come to a single point. So come all the way out from the north over to this constellation area. And here it's, um, it's called Boats or Boots and Corona Borealis, which is very coincidental. <laughs> um, and we're going to go over some of that. But this is the main portion that I was looking at. Um, the way it started was very faint and I thought, okay, so I could see that it's like a little bit lighter there but perhaps it's just nothing that's just as much as we're going to see this far south but i kept uh getting this feeling to come back out i came back out later and it was just starting to get really red and then i saw these white pillars just like the way it looks on the camera or on the picture it, it doesn't look like the way I, I was seeing it um and it looked like i didn't see the pillars in this diagonal direction they actually maybe it was optical illusion but they came from all over and came to a single point overhead where that constellation was kind of like a cone and i thought okay i either this is really happening i'm really seeing this or my mind's playing tricks on me because it started you know waving and everything but it, it looked still previous to that I just started seeing a lot of waving. It looked like fire was being poured out on top of the earth. It literally looked like the earth was entering an atmosphere itself. Like it was like a, a space shuttle coming back in through the atmosphere and, and the fire coming out. Like a lot more beautiful than that. But it looked like it was just being poured and it looked fast. Like not in pictures and cameras where it's like a zigzag and a little light, but it literally looked like it was waving overhead and it got bigger and bigger and just all the imagery that came there shooting stars even and uh the shooting stars were right behind me where boats is and so i just thought that is so crazy but it all kept coming to a peak overhead where i was uh standing and it kept coming to boots or boats and it was like here 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 so this whole area right here and then the one with the, the picture that I showed you here, that was coming from over here. So I looked at what constellations it was, and it was Boots and Corona Borealis. So today I determined to find out wh what's the significance there. So let's look at Boots, boots first. Constellation Northern Sky. It's funny because I actually had to look uh, turn around from the north, almost south, and look right overhead. <clears throat> uh, it's in northern sky. Let's see. The name comes from Latin, boots, which is Greek. Um, means herdsman or plowman. Ox driver. So, that's... It's funny. My, uh, my last name, Hayes, it's said that the name Hay came from a man named Hay, who picked up his his plow that would typically go on his shoulders, and he went and charged and fought off a, a bunch of raiding party. So I, I like any kind of plow imagery, uh, sharing the yoke. So it was a yoke. History and mythology. In ancient Babylon, the star's boots were known as Shupa. They were apparently depicted uh, depicted as the god Enlil. Enlil in the people have connected him both with Satan and with God or uh, Jehovah in the Babylonian flood myths. Um, but they've also, he, he's more associated with God or, or Jehovah who is the leader of the Babylonian pantheon and special patron to farmers uh, of farmers. Boots may have been represented by the animal four leg constellation in, in ancient Egypt. 
resembling that of the ox sufficiently to have been originally proposed as the foreleg of an ox. Which is funny because right here it shows the foreleg of an ox. But in Egypt, they use this for the the Big Dipper. They, they use it for Ursa Major. And maybe it's the hind leg. And this one was the foreleg. Yeah, it says it right here. That's what it's used for. Anyways, I just thought that was amazing. There, there's actually a lot more here. Um, I'm just trying to pick out the part that would matter most. Uh, boots... It, Non-Western astronomy and Chinese constellations, Arcturus was of the most prominent of these various, designated as the Celestial King's Throne, or the Blue Dragon's Horn, the meaning Great Horn. Uh, so, I, I don't know how to speak Chinese. Um, where was the other part I wanted to show? I should have highlighted it somehow, but we could go to next is Corona Borealis. So again, that is right here. It's the crown. And then I think it's funny we're having the Aurora Borealis. This is the Corona Borealis. Me uh, let's see, Greek mythology. Let's skip down to Mesopotamia. So Corona Borealis was associated with the goddess N Nena, who is uh, also the goddess uh, Inanna. So that's the goddess of love um, associated with the moon as well. Uh, this is on the Mesopotamian cuneiform tablets the, that have been found in North America. It was uh, had to do with uh, this one. <laughs> Welsh mythology. Uh, it's referred to... I'm going to skip pronouncing it because I can't. Uh, the castle of the silver circle, like a fortress, and the heavenly abode of uh, Lady Ehrenhod. To the ancient Balts, Corona Borealis was known as the flower garden. Uh, okay, here we go. The Skiddy people of Native American uh, of Native Americans saw the stars of Corona Borealis represented. Uh, representing a council of stars whose chief was Polaris, Polaris, which is the North Star. The constellation also symbolized the smoke hole over a fireplace. So what was shared with me earlier by Betty Horn was Native Americans have a tradition, the Inuit people have a tradition that when the Northern Lights come out, that if it, the Northern Lights touch you, that you die. So they would go inside their homes. Um, and then also their their huts, their smokehouses, are, are very spiritual places. And to see that that constellation represents that smoke hole where the, the, the smoke is released into the heavens. Uh, kind of like in the tabernacle, the smoke from the incense gets released up into heaven as prayers being offered. I think that's very, very significant. Uh, the constellation also symbolized the smoke hole over a fireplace, which conveyed their messages to the gods as a prayer, as well as how chiefs should come together to consider matters of importance. Shawnee people saw the stars as the heavenly sisters who descended from the sky every night to dance upon the earth. Alphaca signifies the youngest of the most calmly sister who was seized by a hunter who transformed into a field mouse to get close to her. Okay, Micmac of Eastern Canada saw Corona Borealis as the Miskaguam, the, the den of the celestial bear. So, the, the den of Ursa Major. So, that's really cool. All right, so why am I mentioning this? It's Corona Borealis, Boots. Um, it, it's because all those pillars that I saw, like, it only happened for a short amount of time. The, those lights just they all reached over like a cone overhead and they were moving like a fire. It looked like the whole earth was going through fire. It was ridiculous. And it lasted such a short time. I texted my wife to come outside to come see it. And by that time it had already stopped. And even the pillars were, were gone. I'm like, Oh man, it, 
it was like a very very short time and it looked like it it it, it just got extreme really fast and then it went away uh, and then it just faded in and out of the this um, but all with the naked eye very very colorful but I kept getting curious because the pillars the white pillars almost look like a city you know it made me think of a city but the tops all kept going over to here and just me being curious I wanted to see what that may mean now uh, on the 9th two days ago was the first of Ayar the the Hebrew month Ayar so what does that mean when a Akkadian it means blossom um, where was it the month of the blossoming uh, in Hebrew the original month before the Babylonian captivity it was called Ziv and that word meant light or glow now the northern lights typically aren't seen like this during this time of year from what I understand but the fact that this is talking about light and glow this is the month where we have Pentecost to me that is um, very telling let's see but this month IR also connects with the tribe of Issachar so the tribe of Issachar what's significant about that let's look at the blessing of Issachar um, blessing all right the blessing that Jacob gives is Issachar is a strong ass donkey lying down between two burdens and he saw that settled life was good and the land was pleasant and bowed his shoulders to bear and become a servant unto tribute is a reference to the religious scholarship of the tribe of Issachar uh, those scholars feel that it may more simply be a literal interpretation of Issachar's name so I don't know so much about that but the blessing itself it's talking about this heavy burden that a donkey is carrying a donkey is carrying the burden of Christ uh, when he entered into Jerusalem it carried the king is this Issachar the month these the northern lights the sky being red you know coming in in corona borealis <laughs> it just it, it's hard not to think about these are connections that is very hard not to make after understanding the things that we tip we understand about the second coming it's very hard to ignore that and for us for our garments to be made white that we take christ's name upon us that we take his yoke upon us these are all of the things that president nelson has been telling us repent it's time to make a, a choice time is coming soon um and here, here we have it. Um, th this brings in all of the 12 tribes. We, we always go over different tribes and their blessings and, and what's so significant about them. We talk about Ephraim all the time. It's funny, Issachar is also connected with the Sea Peoples. Um, with, uh, let's see, the names Issachar and Nephitali appear to have changed places elsewhere in the text. And the birth narrative of Issachar and Nephtali is regarded as textual scholars as having been spliced together from its sources in a manner which has highly corrupted the narrative. The number of scholars think that tribe Issachar actually ori originated as the Shekelesh group of sea peoples. Uh, scholars also believe that the memory of such non-Israelite origin would have led to the Torah's authors having given Issachar's, Issachar a handmaiden as a matriarch. Well, we know that a connection with the handmaiden is a connection with the church, it's a connection with Mary, it's a connection with Eve. So I tend to think that the Lord is using the signs in the heavens and the signs in the sun as spoken of in Matthew to, to teach us that we're being gathered in again. The, it's a time of repentance. We had that sign of repentance last night. The moon was dark, darkened even to a, uh, it was like a crescent. And then it 
just went over. I guess I can't see it, but it went, it was just gone really quickly last night. So I was looking north, kept seeing, oh, here it is. So the crescent moon. And that's fun. I actually just read something about that. But here also, in Boots and Corona, I was actually seeing shooting stars here. And also the Corona pillars that are, doesn't quite seem to be the same thing. But the pillars I saw actually waved. They moved. It, it, it looked like a flame in the wind. And it was white. And it all pointed here like in a cone. So I don't know how else to explain it. But my pictures show me very beautiful Im images. But it, it's also not exactly the same thing I was looking at. Um, oh, the, the funny part is I was also listening to Ether, um, Ether chapter 12 and 13 as I was watching everything. And it was talking about renting the veil and uh, of how the brother of Jared was able to pierce the veil and, and see beyond things. And so I thought, okay, maybe my mind is playing tricks on me because this is, this is just too on the nose because just the other day I was listening to Doctrine and Covenants 109 during a huge windstorm and I went outside and we've been getting attacked uh, in, in various ways because I'm running for office as sheriff. So there's been lots of stuff going on and I'm just thinking, why are these people acting like this? They should know better. And then the huge winds came in as I was going through the verses. I think they're around 40 to 50. Uh, in the dedicatory prayer of the Kirtland Temple of protecting the saints and and if people will not come and repent, will thou visit your justice on them? And I'm like, oh my gosh. So <laughs> this has just been a pattern, uh, especially this past week, two weeks of listening to scripture and it being very impactful for a sign or, or thing that I'm witnessing that uh, I just have trouble explaining. Anyways, that's what I wanted to share. Sorry, I'm all over the place and and, and uh, don't explain myself very well, but hopefully you get something from it. All right, thank you. Bye.